Hello, everyone. My name is Tim B. Green, and this is Crush It Club, episode 43, Fix Self-Censoring. Now, I tend to be solutions-focused. It's literally, for language reasons, I've decided to say fix self-censoring, which is the seventh fatal flaw of thinking, rather than saying self-distancing is the fix. Because with this one, I have a fundamental disagreement that self-censoring is, or sorry, self-distancing is partial and only one of the two fixes available. And I think it is the least powerful of the two. So sorry, Matthew, I have to disagree with this one. It's useful. There's no question about it. And the best part of self-distancing is you can do it yourself. Sad to say, but most people in the world, and I mean most people, uh, including myself, are not as reliable as you yourself are for doing what you need to do, because it's your, it's your baby, it's your passion. So oftentimes, even without any ill intent, with every good intent, you can't rely on others as much as you can rely on yourself in that it's your baby, it's your choice. So it's up to you. And that's where uh, self-distancing is the most reliable of these techniques because you don't need to rely on anybody but yourself. And if you make the choice not to do it, you own that choice. So as I said, in this episode, episode 43 is fix self-censoring. So self-censoring is, I guess, pretty obvious. What it sounds like is sort of like, well, you know, I should, no, that's not going to work. It's the idea that we have a natural propensity and in fact is somewhat glorified that you need to be a lesser version of yourself where you're all about ego, you're, you're too self-impressed. And honestly, this is often true, but anything taken to extreme is bad. I don't think that um, the generation uh, Y and Z are anywhere near as grandiose as they believe they are. They were taught that, and that is the fault of the psychologists who got the causation backwards. We've talked about that before. Um, but yeah, it's not that self-esteem causes success. It's that success and accomplishment cause self-esteem. They got it backward, and we wound up with what in China they would call little emperors. So, but this is on the other side of that. It isn't like, I can do anything as long as I believe it enough. Well, it's probably true, but you're going to have to put in that unwavering effort for as long as it takes. And you should assume that's going to take more than a decade, because if you do it quicker, that's great. So let's get into self-censoring. Self-censoring is about self, let's call this self-doubt without testing. So the flaw with this is before even examining the merit of an idea, you set it aside because it's like, well, I thought of this or that's too simple of a solution to be valid. So then you discount it, you let it go before actually examining it more critically. So um, we'll start with May's fix for this and then go on to mine. And you know, I didn't invent it. I'm, I'm pretty sure I didn't invent it um, in any stretch of the imagination. I'm sure that uh, people of all ages, and what I mean is historical ages, have had the foresight to have advisors who were not themselves, viziers, whatever you want to call it. Um, and that is about having uh, getting outside perspective. But first of all, maze, and that is self-distancing. So uh, Daniel Pink and others uh, cite work. I'm reading his book now, and that will be tomorrow's. Tomorrow's video will be about uh, Daniel Pink's book. I'm trying to get this title in. Beside, there we go. Uh, about uh, uh, Daniel Pink's most recent book, um, The Power of Regret, which is fantastic. So I'm reviewing it tomorrow. And he talks about self-distancing in there. But the reason I'm talking about it now is that is May's cure for self-censoring. So this is about 
and I love this. I thought this was hilarious. Speaking like Elmo. Elmo likes having fun. So it's like Elmo and apparently, was it Caesar? I can't remember. I think it was, anyways, one of the uh, Romans or Greeks of fame for their wisdom who spoke in the third, using a third person pronoun or using their own name. So if I go, Tim makes videos every day or he makes videos every day. You, you've got this, Tim. That sort of thing, they, uh, there is real research to show that, especially in places where you question yourself, addressing yourself with a third person pronoun, although it is genuinely annoying to some people, um, carries real benefits. So if you're going into a job interview, it's like, I'm nervous, right? So that's first person. Instead, go, Tim feels nervous, but he'll be okay. You've got this, Tim. And they found that people were actually more confident under a very stressful um, sort of, uh, let's call it a synthetic interview, but an interview where there was a panel of people asking hard questions to somebody under a lot of duress and pressure because of the, the environment they created. And the people who did the best were given instructions to use third person pronouns. So this really does work. So this is a matter of taking your decisions, taking your ideas, your innovations, your solutions, your business models, whatever it is, from a self-distancing perspective and looking at them as though they were somebody else's idea. So not just using those third person pronouns, but saying, how would how, what, what advice would I give my best friend if they came to me with this idea? And that again is inspired by Daniel Pink uh, through LinkedIn, actually not himself, but one of his, um, one of his friends, one of his connections, which uh, uh, did a book on decision-making or something like that. I can't remember what her name is, but she's an academic. And we'll be talking about a piece of information in that book in a second also. I haven't read the book, but it was on a video um, Daniel did with this gal on, on, on a LinkedIn video, which referred to that, that piece of the book specifically. So the bottom line is, and I really love this, in the, and, and this loops back to Daniel Pink's book in terms of with the self-distancing is if you wanted to reach out, and I just literally did this yesterday, today technically, because I'm in Japan, but this morning in the wee hours of the morning, I phoned and talked to two friends I haven't talked to in 35 years. And one of the things that inspired me was Daniel Pink's book, because he says, if you feel like it would be awkward to talk to somebody after a long time, like 35 years-ish, um, then ask yourself, how would you feel about receiving a call from an old friend from 35 years ago to flip the script? So by doing that, or as I said, I love the one that he said, and I have also myself used this technique. What would somebody you really care about? Your, your loved one, one of the people that's the most special in the world to you. What advice would you give them if it was them asking about this idea that you're having. That's as far away as you can get from yourself and it is very valid and it is very powerful. I also think honestly, it's very limiting because you cannot have an outside perspective of yourself. You can have, let's say 50% outside perspective of yourself. And so that's why I'm closing this video with the one that I think is even more powerful, but relies on other people is Absolutely do the self-distancing, but beyond that, do something else. Ask somebody who is completely naive to or informed about the topic, but not what you're talking about and saying, somebody who cares about you enough to be honest with you, like truly honest, not your feelings, but the validity of your idea or your solution. Ask them because as the Heath brothers call it, the curse of knowledge, we can't not know what we know and therefore the outside perspective will inform us in a way self-distancing cannot. That is Crush It Club episode 34, uh, fix self, 
censoring. My name is Tim B. Green. Bye for now.